Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video because I have an update for you guys regarding foreclosures and mortgage delinquencies here based on two reports from Adam as well as Black Knight here. The first report I want to share with you guys is actually from uh, Adam or A-T-T-O-M regarding zombie foreclosures. A zombie foreclosure is a property that is in the foreclosure process that is actually vacant here. So it says here, zombie foreclosures rise in the fourth quarter across the United States as lenders pursue more delinquent mortgages here. So do zombie foreclosures still exist? So right now there's uh, around 321,000 pre-foreclosure properties. I should define a pre-foreclosure because they don't actually provide that in the report here. So a pre-foreclosure in general uh, means that the homeowner is at least 90 days or more past due on paying their mortgage. So that's a pre-foreclosure property, around 321,000 nationwide. Out of those houses there, there's only 8,903 properties that are vacant or are zombie foreclosures. That represents 2.78% of all pre-foreclosure properties here. So according to Adam here, just under 1.3 million U.S. residential properties are vacant at the end of 2023, according to their analysis here. I can't say um, how often I get uh, comments saying there's 10 million vacant properties nationwide. And once those get released on the market or become a foreclosure, the housing market is actually going to crash. However, the data, uh, according to this report here, state there's only uh, 1.3 million vacant properties nationwide. And we have over 100 million properties uh, nationwide here as well, vacant or not. To be exact, the 1.3 million vacant houses represent 1.27% of the total of 101 million residential properties nationwide. Those vacant properties that have now become zombie properties consist of just under 9,000 nationwide, uh, continuing to make zombie properties a thing of the past. So pretty wild that out of all the properties that are in the pre-foreclosure process, less than 9,000, that is a very, very small fraction of the 101 million properties nationwide. So here's a breakdown, uh, just under 102 uh, million houses nationwide, residential properties, and about 1.3 million of those are vacant, around 1.3%. So this is also something they shared as well because for investment properties, which they're defining that as a non-owner occupied property, around 24 million properties uh, nationwide and 3.56% or around 842,000 are considered vacant. Now, one thing I will challenge them regarding this is that just because a property is non-owner occupied, in other words, not a primary residence, does not mean it's an investment property. Gosh, I know a family who owns about 10 properties um, across uh, California and not a single one of those is an investment property in which they're earning income from. So uh, this number here of about 24 million properties includes properties that are vacation houses, second houses, et cetera, that are not used for investment purposes here. In regards to bank-owned properties, uh, that is a property in which the homeowner got foreclosed on and the bank or the lender now owns the property. Uh, that is just under 15,000 houses nationwide and 15.85% of those are vacant or around 2,400 houses. Now, if you guys are curious how these uh, foreclosures, how this compares to previous quarters here, uh, this report here reveals there's around 321,000 residential properties that are in the process of foreclosure in the fourth quarter of this year, up 1.7% uh, from the third quarter of this year and up a whopping 12.8% compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. A growing number of homeowners have faced possible foreclosure following the national moratorium, of course, that uh, was in place thanks to the CARES Act that was enacted back in March of 2020, but the federal moratorium was lifted in the middle of 2021 here. Among these uh, 321,000 pre-foreclosure properties, 
uh, about 8,900 sit vacant as a zombie foreclosure here in the fourth quarter. That figure is also up slightly from the previous quarter, up by 1.4%, but up by 15.3% compared to one year ago. This latest increase marks the seventh straight quarterly increase. However, even though it's up by 15% uh, uh, compared to 12 months ago, the total amount of uh, zombie foreclosures still remains very low. Just one in every 11,000 412 houses around the United States are a zombie foreclosure. According to the CEO of Adam, he said the following, rising equity flowing from rising home values has not only kept foreclosure uh, cases from spiking since the moratorium was lifted, it also keeps giving delinquent homeowners a valuable resource they can use to either uh, stave off eviction or sell their houses and move on. As a result, we continue to see none of the widespread abandonment that followed the housing market crash after the Great Recession uh, in the late 2000s. Now, one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, this uh, relatively low level of foreclosures right now is because a lot of people have equity in their houses right now. So according to a new report from Black Knight, I think this was published just a few days ago here, it says U.S. mortgage holders have some $16.4 trillion of equity in their houses though. Of that total, $10.6 trillion is what we refer to as tappable equity, meaning the amount a homeowner could borrow against while keeping at least 20% equity stake in their property. On top of that, because so many people have equity in their houses right now, if they're going through a financial hardship, one uh, avenue rather than getting foreclosed on is just to sell their house and uh, get the equity out of their house. Now, of course, not everyone has that option though, of course, because if you bought a house uh, within the last one year and you put a minimal down payment of 0% or less than 3.5%, uh, uh, those people are more susceptible to uh, foreclosures if they lose their jobs, have a financial hardship, et cetera. Uh, so the vast majority of the people that are at greatest risk are the people who bought a house more recently and put a lower down payment to buy their house. And those people could be in a scenario in which they have no equity in their houses. And because of that, they can't sell their house because the lender is not willing to take on a loss, uh, such as a short sale, for example. Uh, going back to the support from Adam here, it says, while most neighborhoods around the United States have few or no zombie foreclosures, the biggest increases from the third quarter of this year through the fourth quarter of this year in states with at least 50 zombie properties are Kentucky. Zombie properties are up 15%, uh, Connecticut up by 15% as well, and we have Maryland, Texas, and California. In contrast, the largest quarterly decreases among the states with at least 50 zombie properties were New Mexico. Zombie properties decreased by 15%. Then we had New Jersey, Maine, Nevada, and Georgia. They also touch on the vacancy rate for all residential properties as well. So hope we'll provide some context regarding, do we really have 10 million vacant properties that are gonna hit the market and crash the housing market here? Anyways, the vacancy rate of all residential properties uh, nationwide has remained virtually the same for the sixth quarter in a row. It stands at 1.27% or one in every 78 properties, which is virtually the same as the 1.26% rate in both the third quarter of this year and the fourth quarter of 2022. And again, that percentage of 1.27% represents just under 1.3 million vacant properties nationwide. Okay, let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about a new report from Black Knight regarding uh, mortgage delinquencies and foreclosures for the month of September here. It says the national delinquency rate rose to 3.29% in September, up uh, 12 basis points from August and up by 13 basis points compared to one year ago. Uh, that actually marks only the second and the largest annual increase in the past two and a half years. So the increase uh, on a year-over-year -year basis is up by 13 basis points, the biggest uh, increase in the past two and a half years, which of course makes sense because we had virtually uh, a very, very low level of delinquencies on a national level over the past several years, 
due to the fact that home prices increase big time. So to me, it makes sense that this is actually the biggest increase in about two and a half years, given that prices decreased in the second half last year, whereas before that, we saw huge gains in prices in 2020 and 2021. However, though, despite this rise, the delinquency rate in mortgages here is still 71 basis points or 0.71 percentage points uh, below the pre-pandemic levels back in September of 2019. Now, here's something that really caught my attention, though, because loans uh, 30 days past due rose by uh, 48,800 or a gain of 5.1% marking the fourth consecutive monthly increase, uh, while the 60-day uh, delinquent population extended its own streak of increases, rising by 3%, that actually marked the sixth month in which the 60-day uh, population actually has been increasing. The reason why I say this really caught my attention though, was because when looking at early stage uh, delinquencies or uh, 60 days uh, past due, this is an early indication of potential future foreclosures. Uh, keep in mind, the foreclosure process tends to take about a year or longer uh, to process. So when looking at an early indication of foreclosures, you have to look at the amount of uh, delinquent uh, mortgages we have right now. So this really caught my attention regarding 60 days um, past due. Uh, an increase for the past six months in a row. Having said that, what we really should be focusing on though is serious delinquencies. That is at least 90 days or more past due on your payment. That actually rose uh, 7,000, uh, but remains 6.7% below September of 2019's levels. While overall uh, delinquencies have increased, the number of loans in active foreclosure fell to 214,000 in September, the lowest point since March of 2022, and about 25% below pre-COVID levels. Block Knight also shared how each of these states fare because there's some very big differences here. So for example, the states with the high share of non-current uh, mortgages here actually are these states right here. Mississippi leading the nation at a rate at 7.8%. 92%. After that was Louisiana at 7.4. Then we had Alabama, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. Uh, at 7.92%, this is much lower than the 24% peak we saw in October of 2005, uh, which by the way, uh, Louisiana, their peak was also uh, in October 2005, which is really impacted by um, Hurricane Katrina that hit during the summer months of 2005. In contrast, in Alabama, Indiana, and Pennsylvania, uh, the peak was set back in January of 2010, just after the Great Recession. Um, in regards to that, the peak there was around uh, 12 to about 16% for those states. And of course, that's much lower than the current uh, rates right now. And the current rates uh, right now are not too far off the all-time record lows that was set back in uh, 2000 and also in 2023. In contrast, here are the top five states that have the lowest share of mortgage delinquencies here. Leading the nation is actually in Colorado. The rate is only at 1.95% compared to Mississippi, that was at 7.92%. Um, after that was Washington, Montana, Idaho, and California. Uh, something worth mentioning here as well, is the rate right now at around 2% for these five states is not too far off the all-time record lows. That was in the range of what? 1.5 to around 2%. So big picture here, um, overall uh, delinquency rates uh, still remains very, very low, but um, has been increasing as of late. And of course, I'll definitely keep you posted with latest developments. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you. Have an awesome day. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.